I feel like my little cat should be right <laughs> here. <laughs> Just want to sit out? Usually her spot on the couch. Nice. Welcome into This Week in MLF, presented by Target, and it's September. It's official. That means there is less than two months to go in the MLS regular season, so the playoff hunt is on. Who will make it? Who will be left on the outside looking in? Welcome in. Jillian Sakovitz alongside David Goss. But September, guys, also means something else. As David is so nicely modeling for us, it is Kick Childhood Cancer Month. Kick it out. And that means you will be seeing these shirts across Major League Soccer the yellow ball, and so much to raise money and raise awareness for childhood cancer. And you can get involved throughout the month, post pictures with your kick childhood cancer scarf or your favorite club scarf on Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag scarves up. For each post, MLS Works is going to donate $1 to Children's Oncology Group. So I absolutely love that and thank you for being such a lovely model. David. I feel like it fits me really well. Oh, looks so I great. might just wear this every month. As you should. First things first, David, on this show, we start off with Twim Takeaway. And I know you've been impressed with the scoring that's been going on by Real Salt Lake. I think everyone has <laughs> to love what you're seeing. This is a record. Six goals in back-to-back -back games for RSL. Now, yes, they played a nine-man Colorado Rapids for a lot of time last week. But this week against LA Galaxy, it was a six-pointer. And they go down 30 seconds in. And you're thinking, this is a young team. This is a team that's had struggles at times this year. That's really bad for their confidence and then they came back and played like it hadn't happened and they absolutely played LA off the field they were fun to watch when this attacking three or four depending on who's playing center forward gets going they're arguably the most fun team to watch in major league soccer and you have to be impressed by the fact that yeah they made a mistake in the offseason they didn't get the right center forward but they're able to rotate different guys in in Corey Baird in Luis Silva and now Demir Krylock who gets a hat trick in this game and Rusnak's pulling the strings behind him Savarino and Plata look dangerous Brooks Lennon's giving them a lot of threat down the right side as well. So this is a young team, which is what we all wanted to see coming into the year. We thought Mike Pecky would have them going from week one like he did at the end of last year. But last year, remember, they hit that run from July all the way through. They were the best team in Major League Soccer. They're starting to look like that squad again. And you say fun to watch, and that has made them now begin to solidify their place as a playoff contender in the Western Conference. Another team that... Not as much, but is potentially solidifying their spot is the Montreal Impact. The win over this past weekend, David. <laughs> Montreal, you're getting love. Could not have come at a better time. Just when we thought they were trending in the wrong direction, one win in six games. They come out and they kind of surprise us. The New York Red Bulls come to town, the Supporter Shield leaders, and they put up a 3-0 win on them. They get two goals off set pieces, something they've struggled with this season. So... I was very impressed with what I saw with the Montreal Impact. And who doesn't want to see Ignacio Piatti in another postseason? I do. I can tell you, Atlanta and New York Red Bulls and they, they definitely do not <laughs> want to see that guy in a must-win game. All right, let's discuss club and country now. The 24-man roster is out, David, when the U.S. is going to have a couple of friendlies coming up against, though, some powerhouses in Brazil and Mexico. Exciting. The trend of younger players is upon us and some exciting MLS names in there. Who are you keeping your eye on? Well, I'm really excited for these games because Brazil and Mexico is a great test. So I look at this list and two of the names that pop out for me are Christian Roldan and Zach Steffen. When I look at Roldan, you look at the U.S. national team, any national team, but the U.S. especially, you've had these guys who are your Swiss Army Knives, right? Jeff Cameron plays center back, right back, center mid. Alejandro Bedoya plays out wide. He plays in an attacking role. He plays in a defense role. You need guys like that because with the national team, you don't have everyone week to week and you can't acquire players. So you need guys that can fit into different holes when someone's hurt, when someone's suspended. Roldan's been that for the Sounders and he does it at a winning level. He knows what it's like to win in must-win games in the playoffs. He knows what it's like to go on long stretches with the team. He's a great person in the locker room because he's a little bit older than these 19 and 18 year olds right. who are going to make quickly, up. Very quickly he's become a veteran. He's the vet on you know, yeah. his third cap which is crazy to say. So he's a big piece I think for this team and he's done some really great things with the Sounders especially on the ball and he's a clean passer. That's going to be something that I really want to see in the national team. And the other one's Zach Steffen because I think he's the future. He's already a starter in MLS. We saw what he did against Atlanta in the playoffs last year in a huge moment 
moment in a penalty kick shootout. What he did to France, who won the World Cup, he was able to get a draw in France in their last game before going off and winning the World Cup. So he's a player, he's got great athleticism, he reads his angles well, he doesn't make mistakes, he can come off his line as well. And I think he's got a bright future overall in his career, and I'm hoping that he's got a bright future for the national team. I think everybody is. How fun would it be to watch such a young Zach Steffen become the starting goalkeeper for the U.S. men's national team? I'm going to talk a club in this one. I'm going to give a shout out to the New York Red Bulls. Three guys on, in the lineup. It's really exciting. You see a nice mix of guys in there. Tim Parker, Aaron Long. Um, Aaron Long getting his first call up. Parker just his second. And then the homegrown Tyler Adams. It's awesome to see these guys playing for our country and seeing what they can do. I can't wait. Yeah, A Lolo, shout out to him. <laughs> Congratulations, Aaron Long. And a few other guys on this roster is like DC's Paul Ariola. You discussed Christian Roldan. He can play multiple positions, which yeah. when guys get hurt, things like that you need. So can he. Yeah, Paul Ariola played right back for DC. I didn't really see that one coming, but he looked good. Yeah, he and he did. had a good game. He's fun on the outside, and he's one of those players who you know what you're going to get from him. So he's consistency. Maybe he's never going to be messy or Neymar which Tim Weah could be, so that's exciting. But Ariel is a guy that you're going to need to have in your roster. What do you make of a guy like Zardes who has found his way back onto the lineup by way of the Columbus crew? Well, I love it, for starters. Right? He's a great guy, and he's a great personality in the league, but he's continued to grind, and there are fans out there that will never like Giassi Zardes, and he, I think he's okay with that, I'm okay with that. But one of the things to point out is, there's a coaching change coming for the U.S. national team. Jesse Zardes has scored a lot of goals for Greg Berhalter. So Greg Berhalter is that guy. Zardes could see himself be a central piece of the national team going forward over the next few years. And on the flip side, you got another guy like Marky Delgado getting his second call up. Yeah, which is great to see. He's earned it as well, right? He's grinded from the bottom. He had to move clubs at a young age, but he's pushed. And what I like is the idea that he's learned from Michael Bradley, and he might be the guy that replaces Michael Bradley in the future for the national team. So it's cool to see that link through the national team's history. Can't wait. Excited to see what some of these youngsters have in store for us and keep our eyes on these MLS players. First up for the U.S. men's national team is Brazil. That game is going to be at MetLife Stadium on September 7th. They're actually going to be training over at the Red Bulls training facility all week. And then they've got Mexico at Nissan Stadium in Nashville on September 11th. Okay, one more thing, David, I'm going to need you to um, press this little button for me, please, with our Should Did I? You See That? I've never done this before. Do I, I stretch first? How do I go for this? Just go for Just it. Just go for it? Yes. Did you see that? Uh, do you recognize that voice? Yeah. I do. It also gives me just chills down my back thinking of Simon Borg yelling at me for years. <laughs> what, what a special person. What a special personality. Another special personality was that of an animal that uh, made its appearance at Rio Tinto Stadium. Yay! Duck, duck, duck. Now, we asked, did you see that? And the answer is... Yeah. Yes, we actually saw it together when we were working Match Day Central this past weekend. Gus, you pointed it out. You said, guys, hold on. Yeah, there's uh, a duck on the field. Is there a duck on the field? And then you, then you got some attention around here. Yeah, well, I grew up playing in a duck-based area, so I'm very <laughs> aware and familiar with ducks Where would impeding that be? on the field. Long Island, not really that <laughs> special. Canadian geese more. I don't know if those count as ducks. But I thought the duck played well. I thought he stayed locked in. He was good in transition. He, he filled the gaps pretty well. And he also just wasn't scared of the moment. Because Laton can be intimidating, right? This is the yeah. galaxy. Yeah. The duck wasn't scared. He didn't care. No. He, and there was even one part where I think Rusnak uh, tried to catch it. Yeah. I, to me, that's why Rusnak gets match, man of that match. Not Forget Carlisle. the goals. Yeah. Because you, he did that extra bit. That's, that's what you're looking for from a star player. That piece of content will do better than anything I do all year. For sure. Well, we can just go out and hire like a bunch of ducks. And Animals work wonders. Look at Super Bowl commercials. So we've got know? space here on the couch. Let's throw a duck in. That's who we were waiting for. All right. Well, that does it, Goss. Thank you so much for coming. What do you think? It was a blast. Yeah, it was a blast. I'm going to wear this shirt every day, and then I can just come back. Something else that's going to be a blast is this week in MLS is heading on the road. They will be in Nashville. Suzanne and company will be there. They'll have you covered, covering that U.S. men's national game. So uh, make sure to keep it locked. And for all the updates, we'll see you soon. Thanks.